Hi everyone, today I'm going to do my Erin M2 review. Let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the packaging. So I've already done a unboxing. Uh, you can see the details in the link that I'll provide. So the box itself is actually quite nice. Um, it's got this cardboard thing on the surrounding it. So you just push it out. Uh, it's got some instructions on the bottom. And here they have this cork or cardboard style box. It's quite similar to the original M1s. And the best thing about this box is that it's held together magnetically. Like, I mean, everything is better with magnets. Look at that, it's so nice. So I've already unboxed it, so I'm not gonna go through the contents. Um, I only left the USB cable in here. Um, it's got a micro USB cable, so it's quite short. I probably won't use this, so I left it in the box. Another thing to note is they're quite generous with the replacement ear tips. So they actually give you uh, four, four pairs of replacement tips. So there are these foam ones. So these are the, the foam tips. So if you, if you squeeze them, they, they take a few seconds to reform. So the idea is you would give it a light squeeze and then you would put them in your ear and then they slowly expand out to block out as much noise as possible. So they give you a small pair and a larger pair as well. So I'll just put them side by side for comparison. Might be a little bit hard to see. Uh, the left one is a bit smaller, the right one is a bit larger. So they also have these rubberized ones as well. These are the um, more regular ones that you might see on other in-ear headphones. They also give you a pair of these. So again, a large one and a smaller one. So I think they're quite generous They get, um, with these replacement tips. On top of that, inside the earphones themselves, they already come pre-installed with some phone tips as well, which is quite nice. So overall, you get one, two, three, four, five pairs of ear tips, which is very generous, I think. So next up, let's take a look at the hardware itself. So here it is. This is the Erin capsule. Comes with the box. It's aluminium or I think it's aluminium, it's metallic. It's got a branding on the front there, it says Erin. It looks like it's etched in, and it's, it's really quite nice to touch. It's really smooth. Uh, the mechanism to open it is here on the top. Some people think you, you unscrew it, but really you just have to pull it and it slides out. Uh, it's actually quite addictive, uh, opening and closing this thing. It's very satisfying, the click it gives at the end and also the click when you pull all the way out, it clicks in as well. It feels like it's held in magnetically and it's, it's really nice. Oh yeah. Anyway, so there is a charging LED over here. There is actually three of them. So it pulsates telling you that the earbuds are now charging. It only, only pulsates for a little bit, so to save power. There's a LED at the top the bottom left and the bottom right. So there's three LEDs forming kind of like a triangle. When you plug it in for charging, there will be a single LED flashing at the top. And when it's done charging, it will show all three LEDs. So that wasn't documented anywhere. That's just after some usage, uh, I noticed that. So when you open the capsule, you are presented with the earbuds. The bottom two lights, if they are pulsating, it means that they are charging the earbuds themselves. So you see that they're actually a solid orange at the moment. That means both earbuds are fully charged and ready for use. Another cool thing about this Erin capsule and how the earbuds uh, dock into the capsule is that they're actually held in magnetically. So these pins at the bottom are what charges the earbuds. So if you just pop them in, the magnets align and it goes straight in. So let's do that again. There you go. 
So I do say that they hold in magnetically. The magnets are a little bit weak. Uh, it would be nicer if they're a little bit stronger. So even though it says it's charging, you have to actually position it a little bit. Otherwise, it will actually get stuck when it goes into the capsule. So I'll just demonstrate that again. Pop it in. It looks like it's in, but you see that? It's actually stuck here. Even though it's charging, so it's charging fine, but you have to just pop it in a little bit more. So I guess that's a flaw of their design. I wish they had a bit stronger magnets that will resolve that issue. Okay, so I have the Eren M1s as well. So here is the M1 capsule. It's uh, silver. Again, I think it's aluminium. The M2s, the black one on the left, is a bit taller and it feels a bit heavier than the, uh, the M1s. Um, it might have a bigger battery, I'm not too sure. The black one tapers from the top to the bottom, so it gets larger as it goes down. Whereas the silver one, the M1s, uh, they taper to the middle, or they taper away from the middle, so it's th thicker in the middle, and then it gets thinner to the sides. So the old ones only had two charging LEDs. This one indicated whether the earbuds inside were charging, and then there was one charging LED in here, which indicated whether the capsule itself was charging. So if you plugged in a USB cable here, it would go red to indicate that the battery inside the capsule was charging, and then it would go green when it was fully charged. Uh, this LED will turn off if the earbuds inside are fully charged. So here are the old M1 earbuds. So these weren't held in magnetically. They, have, they were just like a, a pins on the end, which line up with the ear in logo. And you had to align them yourself and push them in, and they were held in via friction. So then the LED has turned on now because it's charging. So similarly for the other side as well, uh, you see here that there are pins on the end, and then there's a logo here, and then you have to line them up, and then you push it in, and then they're now they're charging. Not as sleek as the magnetically attached ones on the M2. Also, the capsule itself, it feels a bit rough, the opening mechanism, compared to the M2s. So the M2 is completely smooth, very satisfying click. Also, it doesn't spin within the barrel. So if you try to spin it, it doesn't spin at all. Whereas the M1s, you can actually spin this capsule. So I'm just gonna do a quick comparison between the uh, M1 earbuds and the M2 earbuds. So here you have the two earbuds. So I pulled out one each. Uh, these, these are the M2s. They're they're dark, they look a bit sleeker, whereas the M1s are a, like a cylinder shape. Um, I do like the look of the M2s more. They look sleeker, they don't have this gold logo, so they're kind of more stealth-like. Um, they're actually a little bit smaller. I'm not sure how I can show this on camera, but the, their length, they're not as long, so they don't protrude out of your ear as much. They're both slightly angled, so when, they, when you put the M1s in your ear, you want to see the, the L for the left, and you want to give it a squeeze, and then you put it in. So this is facing the back of your head, whereas this is facing forward. So let's uh, rotate this down a little bit. So you see that this is forwards and this is backwards. So they're angled slightly back towards your, your head. So similar, similar thing for the M2s. Uh, you see the, the gold pins, you want these to be facing backwards so you would give this a like, squeeze and then you would put them in like this. So if you were facing forward, forward this way, backward this way. So another interesting thing I noticed was these don't have left and right markings. So the M2s are both identical on both earbuds. So you see here this is earbud 1, this is earbud 2, um, there's no markings. So when I, when I got these, I was very curious, like, this is kind of dumb. I mean, they, they put markings on this one. How am I supposed to know which one is left and which is right? So I put them in and they happened to be correct. The first time I put them in, left was left, right was right. And then I took them off and I put them back in the capsule and I flipped them and they were still correct. Left was still left, right was still right. Whoa. It turns out that these actually auto-detect which is left and which is right. I am still not sure how it does it, 
but every time you take it out of the capsule and you put them in your earbuds, they will auto-correct and they will detect the left one to be the left channel and the right one to be the right channel. Um, they do have accelerometers inside them, so I'm guessing it's a combination of uh, knowing which direction is down and then also um, using some sort of magnetic detection since they use um, some magnetic connection between two to determine which one is left and right. Uh, it's really cool, so you don't have to worry about um, which one being left and which one being right. But bear in mind that this only works the first time you take them out of the capsule. So for example, you put this in your left ear and then you put this in the right ear, um, they'll connect and then they'll be the right, left and right channel. However, if you just take, out, take them out of your ear and you swap them, the channels don't swap. You have to actually power them down by putting them in the capsule and then taking them back out. Then it will do the auto detecting left and right channel. Uh, still very cool and very nice to have. So the M2s have this touch area, so this glossy bit here, where it says ear in, ear in, ear in. There is also a LED right in the center. So when that LED is flashing, uh, it means it's in pairing mode and it's looking for a device to connect to. So right now they're actually connected to my phone, so they're not flashing. Um, but this touch area is how you can control your music. So you can do a single tap to start and stop music. You can do a double tap to, do, uh, to change to the next track. And if you long press and then let go, it'll actually activate the assistant on your phone. So if you have an Android phone, it'll be Google Assistant. If you have an iPhone, it'll be uh, Siri and so on, which is pretty cool. So this brings me to the next part of the earphones. Um, it's got a microphone in both earbuds. So I'm thinking it's probably this little notch here is the microphone. I, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but there are microphones in both earbuds and you can make calls with them. Now I've made a few calls. Some of them were okay. So if I was in a quiet area in say an office or, or at home and making a call, it was okay. The other side could hear me. This is what it sounds like. Okay, call is connected. So this is what you can expect when you make a call. So in a quiet environment, this is the volume you can expect. I'm speaking at a normal speaking voice. This is the kind of volume that you can expect and the quality that you can achieve while in an ideal location. If you're outside in a noisy area, uh, basically making calls is it, basically, it's impossible. It's, it's useless. So they have some sort of noise cancelling built into these earbuds. Uh, I'm not sure how it works, but it tries to cancel out the outside noise and only pick up your voice. And I think that algorithm or their method isn't perfect. So what happens is, as you start speaking in a noisy area, the, the first few words you say get completely cut off and then only the, the remaining, remaining words come through and the other side just has no idea what you're saying and the quality is, is quite bad. So I would not recommend these for making phone calls if that's your primary uh, use case for them. Um, I, would, I would look somewhere else. Maybe something with a, a microphone which is a bit closer to your mouth. I mean, this is, this is probably like a physics problem, right? Like your mouth is like over here somewhere and the, the, the sound is going outwards, whereas the microphones are, are behind your mouth, they're in your ear. So picking up sound that way is, is gonna be quite difficult. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the actual pairing. So when you first take them out, uh, when you first use them, both headphones are not paired, obviously. So they use Bluetooth. Um, the instructions tell you to pair both earbuds separately. So the first thing you want to do is you, you take the first one out, you'll see a flashing LED. So maybe I can make it flash by resetting them. So you take it out and you see the flashing uh, LED it means it's in uh, pairing mode, so it's connected to my phone automatically. So when you see that, you just open your phone, go to Bluetooth settings, you know, add a device, and then you connect one of them. And then it'll say ear in on the phone and it's connected. After you've done that, you want to put the one that's been paired back into the capsule so that it turns off. And then you want to do the same thing for the second one. So again, you take it out and then it'll be blinking and then you pair it. So the idea is both earbuds are inde independently paired to the phone. So this allows you to use them in mono mode. So for example, you take one out and you only want to uh, use your left ear, for example, to listen to music. 
can put that in and the other one was completely off in the capsule and then you can still use uh, mono sound, you know, play music, do calls and whatever. And then if you decide to put that away and use the other earbud, it will connect by itself as well. So there is no, you know, master and slave. They technically can be masters. So in the M1s, only the left one, I believe, was the master and the right one always connected to the left. So when you pair them, uh, it will actually say that the left one is, is connected on your phone and it never actually, the phone never actually directly connect, connects to the, the right one unless you go ahead and put this right one into the pairing mode and pair it that way. But for the M2s, uh, they're both paired on setup so that um, they can be used straight away. Now, having said that, one of them does become the master. So if you take the left one out, it connects to your phone, and then you take the right one out, the right one, or the second one, becomes the slave. So the right one connects to your phone via Bluetooth, the, the second one connects via magnetic induction or whatever that method is called. So between the two earbuds, it's connected magnetically. Uh, between the master earbud to the phone, is connected via Bluetooth. So that's how they work. Another thing I want to talk about is the fitment of the earbuds in your ear. So it comes by default with these foam tips. These are quite good. Uh, they fit your ear quite well. So you can just give them a squeeze. They shrink a little bit and then they slowly expand back out once you put them in your ear. These hold quite well. Uh, I've gone for runs with these uh, and they don't feel like falling out. So it's, it's quite well, it's quite good. Um, some other earbuds give you like these wings that you attach on and then it hooks into your ear. This doesn't, they don't have any of that. Um, the tips themselves hold well enough for you to just use them at the gym or going for a workout or a run. So that, that's really nice. So because they have microphones on the earbuds themselves, they have this feature called audio transparency. What that means is it uses the microphone and it picks up the outside noise and it plays it through the earbuds for you. So if you are cycling, for example, uh, you can play your music, but it will also play the outside sound through the microphone, through the earbuds for you as well. So it kind of overlays the outside noise on top of the music. So for safety reasons, you know, you might need that. And it, it actually works quite well. Uh, the quality isn't great, you know, picking up sound from the microphone and then back out to your ear. Not the best, but it's good enough. Uh, I've used it when I'm waiting for a coffee, for example. I'm listening to music. I turn the audio transparency to on. Then I can have my music and I can also hear um, when my coffee is ready, for example. The app also has a gain option. So the gain option basically just lets you increase the volume or decrease the volume. Uh, it's separate to the volume control on your phone. It's just controlling the volume um, for the earbuds themselves. So it's, it's an additional volume control for you. And finally, there is balance. So playing with the balance is actually how I found out about the automatic uh, you know, left and right channel uh, pairing, which is quite nice. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about the sound quality of these earphones. So for music, they're actually top-notch. Uh, compared to the M1s, I would say the M2s are a lot better. So they're noticeably better than the M1s. Uh, in terms of bass, clarity, they, they just sound better to my ear. Uh, I'm not an audiophile, so I'm not going to talk about the highs, the lows, and mids, stuff like that, so that really means nothing to me. But to my you know, average year ears, these sound pretty good and I would recommend them over the M1s. For calls on the other hand, we can't really compare them with the M1s because the M1s didn't have a microphone at all. But from my experience with the M2s, calls are really hit or miss. If you're in a really quiet environment, if you're in the office or if at home and you're making a call, I was able to make an hour long call and the other side was completely fine with it. Uh, they didn't complain about the the volume or the, the quality of the call, they could hear me fine. However, when I was outside on the street, the call is basically unusable. So the other side couldn't hear me at all. I was sounding like I was breaking up, like words were missing. It sounded like really noisy. So I think it's something to do with their noise cancellation algorithm or method. It's, it's not quite there yet. 
Having said that, this is using the V1 firmware. So hopefully Erin, you know, can tweak their algorithm a little bit and make it a little bit better. So that's fingers crossed. This is this is basically the first batch that they've made. So it's running the very first firmware they've ever released. If you're thinking about getting these primarily for music, I would say yes, they're excellent. Uh, but if you're looking at making lots of lots of calls, I would not recommend these for making calls primarily. So next, the connection between the phone and the earbuds has improved uh, quite a bit compared to the M1s. So the M1s used to drop the connection between um, the earbuds themselves and also the connection between the earbud and the phone. So on the old M1s, only one of them were the master and the other one was the slave. So they had issues with the connection between the earbuds. Uh, the M1s used Bluetooth for both the connection between the phone and the connection between the two earbuds. Sometimes the connection between the earbuds would drop out, uh, leaving only like say the left one is playing music, the right one skips for a slight second. Uh, this doesn't really happen anymore on the M2s, so they changed the way the earbuds connect to each other. They use something called uh, near field magnetic induction, so some sort of magnetic connection between the two earbuds instead of Bluetooth. The master earbud in the M2 is basically the first one that you pull out and connects to the phone, that becomes the master. That connection between the phone and the earbud is still Bluetooth. Now that connection still drops. Not as much as the M1s, They're a lot, it's a lot better than the M1s. Having used these for about three weeks, I've had the connection between the earbud and the phone drop maybe about six times and it was only for like a split second. Now the way to tell between whether it's the earbud dropping from the phone or if it's the earbud to earbud connection dropping is by listening to where the sound stops. So if both earbuds lose sound for a slight second or a split second, it means the connection between the, the earbud and the phone has dropped. So there's no, you know, there's no audio stream at all. But if you notice that only one of the earbud drops, then it's the connection between uh, the earbud and the earbud or the other earbud. So I haven't really, really noticed that happening with the M2s. The connection between the two are pretty good. Usually if it does skip, both earbuds stop playing for a split second. So that tells me that it's, you know, it's likely the, the connection between the earbud and the phone. So your connection quality is gonna differ depending on how tall you are and depending on where you like to put your phone. I like to put it, put it in my left pocket. So to make it a bit easier for the earphones to connect to the, the phone, and to you know, reduce that distance, what you can do is you can take out one of the earbuds first. The first one you take out becomes the master. So if you're like me and you like to put it in your left, you know, left pants pocket, put this earbud in your left ear. That, that'll keep the distance between the earbud and the phone much closer uh, it will, and it will reduce the amount of times the, the earbud can disconnect uh, from the phone. So that's just a, a, a trick that I, I noticed after using these for about three weeks. Okay, so next we're going to talk about battery life. So the battery life on this thing is rated at four hours continuous playing. So if you have both earbuds on, connected to your phone, you can expect about four hours of playback. I haven't really used them for four hours continuously, so I can't say too much about whether or not it's true. I've read some other reviews and they say that if you reduce the volume, so if you, don't, if you use them at about, you know, 30% volume, 40% volume, you can expect more than four hours of battery life. For my day-to-day -day use, I use them about 40 minutes a day. So I walk to and from work. Uh, the, the commute is about 20 minutes one way. So I haven't had these run out of battery on me at all. And in fact, the capsule itself, I haven't really needed to charge the capsule either. So the capsule never ran out of battery for me. The earbuds never ran out of batteries. Uh, this was over three weeks of use. Uh, I have charged the capsule just to see what the LED looked like. Um, but if you're thinking about using this on a plane or a long train journey, um, this might not be the earphones for you. They won't last like a full you know, six hour plane ride, obviously. Having these foam tips really helps with the noise uh, isolation as well. So I've noticed that I, I actually keep the volume on my phone quite low and I was still able to hear the music quite clear. So that'll help with battery life actually. Okay, so finally, would I recommend these to people? So the M2s are much better than the M1s. They sound better, the connection is better, 
the connection between the earbuds themselves are pretty solid now and they have microphones and it comes with touch controls that you can you know double tap to go to the next uh, song triple tap to go to the previous one so that's really nice the physical design is amazing they're much smaller than the originals this capsule is much improved this mechanism I could play with this all day it's just that smooth it sounds great it feels great the build quality is top notch the earbuds themselves one of the smallest ones that you can get they don't protrude out of the ear too much and they look really nice now the only drawback with these things is the microphone so if you're thinking of getting these to make calls primarily I simply cannot recommend them the calls themselves are really hit or miss if you're in a quiet area if you're at home in the office you know there's a good chance that the call will go through and it sounds pretty well it sounds pretty good uh, if you're outside they're basically unusable so because of this unpredictable nature of the, the earbuds and whether or not they work in a phone call I simply cannot recommend them hopefully uh, a firmware update will come out and you know they'll fix the, the phone call issue but if you're looking for earbuds to make phone calls don't go here so don't get these so overall if you're looking at music playback and your main objective you know main priority is music quality Recommended for calls, not so much. So that's all from me. Uh, hopefully this review helps and um, thanks for watching.